February 3rd. Sorry. Go ahead and call the meeting to order the February 3rd uh, MPO Technical Committee meeting. Uh, first up is the uh, looking for a motion and a second to approve the agenda. This is Rudy with the City of Waukee. I'll make that motion. Luis with Dartle, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any further discussion? And uh, following suit from past meetings, uh, we'll see if there's anybody that's opposed and not have to all unmute ourselves to vote aye. So is there anybody opposed to approval of the agenda? All right, with nobody approved the agenda, <clears throat> with nobody disapproving the, the agenda is approved. Next up is approval of the meeting minutes from the January 6, 2022 meeting. <clears throat> this is Tracy. There was an amendment. Mike Ludwig was a uh, present, and I did not uh, get that marked down correctly. All right, thanks, Tracy, for that. Uh, any uh, is there a motion and a second to approve the meeting minutes? Yeah, Sturms, I'll move yeah. approval with that amendment. Second, Miller. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion on approval of the meeting minutes? With the amendment, anybody opposed? All right, the meeting minutes are approved. Uh, next up is a report and vote on the election of uh, calendar year 2022 officers. Um, who's gonna take this one? Uh, I, this is Dylan, I can take it, I guess. Um, so the tech committee, uh, Brett, you appointed Mike Ludwig and Dave Oerding to serve as the nominating committee uh, for this year. And that committee did meet and propose the slate of Steve Neighbor as chair and Luis Montoya as vice chair. And if and so we'll hold an election now. Um, if you know whoever's elected, that will take over next month in March and run through the, the full year ending next February. So that's what's been proposed. Um, we'll turn it back over to you. All right, thanks uh, for that. Is there, a, is there a motion to um, approve the recommendation of the nominating committee? Yep. Move to approve, Miller. Second, Husman. All right, it's been moved and seconded to um, Approve the nominating committee's recommendation for Steve Neighbor as chair and Luis Montoya as vice chair for uh, beginning next month. Um, any further discussion? Anyone opposed? All right, that uh, motion is approved. Thank you. Thanks to uh, Steve and, and Luis for being willing to do that as well. Uh, next up is. Uh, Sorry, but I just wanted to clarify real quick too. On the slide, that says for calendar year 21, it's calendar year 22 um, down in the bullet point. So just so everyone's on the same page. We're talking about this year, not last year. For sure. All right, uh, next up is a report and vote on the federal fiscal year 2022 to 2025 uh, TIP amendment, uh, Zach. <clears throat> yes, we got a number of amendment requests from DART. Um, those are all listed in our agenda packet. Um, I will go over those real quick. Um, the first one is for a replacement of their uh, radio system. Um, and all of these amendments are just being shifted into federal fiscal year 2022. There aren't really any other changes being made to them. Um, this one is for um, a total of $1.1 million. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the next one is for some computer hardware um, upgrades. Um, it's for $135,000. Again, no, no other changes in the TIP other than moving it into federal fiscal year 2022. Uh, some computer software upgrades for $225,000, again, being moved into federal fiscal year 2022. Uh, miscellaneous equipment uh, for $35,000, uh, shifting into federal fiscal year 2022. And I believe there's one more um, rideshare vehicle replacement. This is for $600,000 total cost, and that's also being shifted into federal fiscal year 22. All of these are uh, DART funding. 
Uh, it's not any MPO related funding, SDBG funding or anything like that. Um, and they need these requests to be passed through just to get them into the updated tip. Um, if you have any questions about any of these, um, I'd be happy to take them. Um, otherwise, these are before you for your approval. All right, any questions for Zach? Um, if not, is there a motion to approve this recommendation? Motion Sturms. to approve, Huseman. Sturms, I'll second that motion. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Anybody opposed to the TIP amendments? All right, that motion carries. Uh, next up is a report on the fiscal year 23 Unified Planning Work Program and Budget Development. Um, Zach, or Dylan. Thanks. Um, I'll take this second to jump in if he has anything to add. Sorry, I'm trying to get my video to start. Um, so we're working on the budget development and the work program for the next fiscal year. And this is just for um, July 1st through June 30th, so we're on the state fiscal year. And documenting all the things that basically the MPO is going to be doing over that year, including the costs associated, who's going to be doing it, um, what the you know deliverables are going to be essentially. Um, those proposed work activities tie to the federal requirements that are placed upon us um, in US code and in the recent transportation bill and previous transportation bills. Uh, draft of that of the document is due April 1st. So next month we'll have a, an actual draft document for you to review and comment on. We'll send that off to the Iowa DOT, they'll get us comments back. And then in May, we'll come back for a final approval so that that can be turned in by June 1st to the DOT. Um, just, I mentioned some of the uh, federal requirements put upon us. Some of those things include actually, you know, having the work program itself, um, having and maintaining a long range transportation plan, our transportation improvement program and STBG process, maintaining a public participation plan, things like that. So pretty basic things. Um, but what we do in the work program is identify all the various studies and reports and, and things like that that build up into those larger documents. So all the various studies that ultimately will culminate into the long range transportation plan or help uh, implement the long range trans transportation plan we did a couple of years ago. I think I mentioned this last month, but uh, Federal Highway and Federal Transit released emphasis areas for this calendar year, and those are listed there on the screen. So what we're trying to do is make sure that we're hitting all of those emphasis areas in our work program, which shouldn't be an issue. These are things that we are pretty much doing anyway and have been doing, um, but we'll want to make sure that we call those out and, and showing that we're addressing those emphasis areas for the year. Um, so we have been asking our member communities for projects that they want to see in the work program. We have received a couple of those and those are up there on the screen. And, and some of these are things we know that we're just gonna be doing anyway. So these are staff derived um, projects as well. But one is the tra passenger transportation plan. This is the Fed required uh, plan that looks at human service transportation and it's required to be updated every so, you know, so many years. So we're due for a full plan update um, in calendar year 22. So we'll be working on that. Uh, there's also a sidewalk inventory and gap analysis. And this will be all tied into the updated bicycle pedestrian plan, which is called the interconnect plan. Uh, so that plan will be um, slated for completion also in the next fiscal year. We've had a, some discussion with Capital Crossroads on parking analysis and looking at parking regulations throughout the region. Um, and this is something we've had in our work program previously, but now it seems to be getting a little more support behind it from others outside just MPO staff. So uh, that's something we'll be taking a look at if everyone's amenable to that. With the recent transportation bill, the Infrastructure and Jobs Act, uh, there are some new federal funding programs. And so we'll have to be working on how do we implement those. Um, I think if you were on last month, the Iowa DOT presented and talked about some of those programs and how they're going through a process now to, to kind of work out how all that's gonna work. Um, but, so once we get additional information, we'll have to do that internally as well to figure out you know, just who's eligible and what the, if there's application processes and, and all those kinds of things. So those are those are some items we'll be working on over the next fiscal year as well. Uh, we'll continue work with our data bike. Um, one thing that we're looking at doing is not just taking a snapshot of what's happening today, but also looking at how can we forecast that data, similar to what we do with the roadway pavement. So we've got some discussions going with Intrans at Iowa State on software that will allow us to do that. So that'll probably be something that comes to fruition in this next fiscal year. 
And then as we discussed a couple months ago, um, we recently became a member of ICLEI, and that comes along with some tools and software and things like that that allow us to do greenhouse gas inventories for our member cities. And a number of cities are working on those types of inventories, doing a little bit more climate change. And this also ties back to the emphasis area that I just talked about, which uh, one of them was uh, climate change. So that'll be something else that we're looking at doing this next fiscal year. Uh, so with that, we're still soliciting input on any project studies, research, that kind of thing. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to us and we'll, we'll take what we get up until the time the drafts, you know, the drafts do, we'll put that in there. Though we can still amend that, the work program really anytime. It is easier if we can put all that stuff in there before the plan is, the work program is completed though. We can amend it, amend it throughout the year, but it's just a lot easier if we can do it um, at, at the beginning and get it all in there at the forefront. So with that, um, if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, that's what we have for you today. All right, thanks, Dylan. Um, any questions on the on the work plan and budget development? All right, thanks, Dylan. Uh, next up is the report on the federal fiscal year 2026 STBG um, and set aside applications. Zach. Yes, thank you. Just want to give you a quick update on the applications that were submitted um, on January 7th of 2022 for federal fiscal year 2026 STBG funding. Um, in total, we received 12 STBG applications. Um, five of these fell into the system capacity category. Um, we had five in major reconstruction replacement. We had three bridge projects submitted and then one each for system optimization and for transit. Um, the total request this year is a little over $28 million. And we'll probably have approximately $13 million in funding available. Um, we haven't gotten that final number from the DOT yet. We'll probably expect that sometime at the end of the month. Um, on the screen here before you is a list of all the projects that were submitted with some of the details, uh, project title description, um, project costs, and what they're requesting for in 2026 funding. Um, I won't go through each one of these. Um, the list is included in your agenda packet. I would note that um, we have updated that list since the agenda went out. There are some additional Polk County projects that um, we've included in the list, uh, the two bridge projects from Polk County, and then the Northeast 23rd Avenue project as well um, have been added since the agenda went out. So uh, the list on your screen there are all the applications that have been submitted for STBG funding. Um, I think the next slide uh, goes into some details on the TAP applications. Um, we received a total of four TAP applications uh, this year. Um, all of those were for trails or shared use, shared use paths. Um, and their total request is 3.5 million. We'll probably have somewhere around uh, $1.2 million available in TAP funds. Um, here's the list of the projects before you. You can see that we received the four applications, um, one from Des Moines, one from West Des Moines, uh, one from Polk County and one from Ankeny. As far as the schedule moving forward goes, um, we will be meeting with the funding subcommittee on February 24th for the applicants to present their projects. Um, that will start at 9.30 in the morning. We'll run till approximately 11.30. Um, we're working to schedule a follow-up meeting with the funding subcommittee sometime in March um, where they will develop their recommendation for funding for federal fiscal year 2026 um, SDBG and TAP funding. And uh, once that recommendation has been made, uh, we'll bring it to the committees at the April and May meetings uh, for final approval. Um, so that's the summary of the applications that have been submitted for 2026 funding. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them at this time. Any questions for Zach on the STBG applications or TAP applications? All right, thanks, Zach. Sure, thank you. All right, next up is upcoming events. Yep, and I'll fill in for Gunner today. Just wanted to make everyone aware, if you're not already, that we do have a meeting of the Council of Watershed Management Authorities this coming Monday at 2 p.m. Um, we will be hearing from all the watersheds within the Des Moines region as well as the 
North Raccoon and Beaver Creek. Um, and so instead of going around to each city during COVID and with Zoom and all that stuff, we're just kind of compiling it into one. If you don't have a link for this and you'd like to attend, please do reach out to me and I will get that to you. If you have any questions, do let me know. All right, thanks, Allison. Uh, next up is other items of other non-action items of interest to the committee. Uh, are there any? Um, this is Todd. I just wanted to say thanks, Brett, for uh, guiding the group for the past couple of years. Appreciate all the effort. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's been a obviously. Uh, I think I did uh, what one or two meetings in person, and then the rest have been on Zoom. So uh, yeah, uh, I'm exactly what I expected when I took over. Sure. All right. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you and, and uh, welcome to the, the new officers, uh, Stephen and Luis. All right. Thanks, Todd. Uh, any, anything else? Brad, I've got uh, one kind of related to what Todd just mentioned, but as we've started the new year, we do have some new tech members, I believe. Um, and we have a lot of new policy members too. So we'll be holding some more, at least one um, orientation session and probably just do this over Zoom. At a date to be determined, we're still waiting for a few cities to get us their um, representatives, uh, but we'll be setting something up later this month to do an orientation for anybody who's interested. And that doesn't have to just be new members. If you're an existing, you know, someone who's been on for a while and you just want to refresh on some things, feel free to join as well. Um, that said, if anybody wants more of a one on one um, type of orientation, we're happy to do that, too. So uh, be on the lookout for a date uh, later this month. And if you want something different, more one on one, just let me know and we'll get something set up. All right, thanks, Bill, for that. I guess my yeah, my request for that would be as those new members get added to, you know, specifically tech that we're, you know, there's a either a list or something provided that we can, you know, so that we're aware of who those new new members are. Uh, anything else for the good of the cause? If not, our next meeting is March three of 2022 at 9:30 a.m. And with that, we will be adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Appreciate it.